I'm gonna have 50 minutes worth of freaking editing to do because you're sitting here taking freaking hoodlum clips. Well, good morning. We're going to cash some checks today and uh, secure some more ground for next year, which it sounds like I've got locked up. It's a few hundred more acres. And uh, then we're gonna cash some checks, run to the bank again, and uh, go from there. And just look at that beautiful washed combine. It's so shiny now. It's back to looking like how it should instead of all wrinkly and dirty looking. It's time to go look at some more ground. Got this thing shined up so it impresses you. you gotta have everything clean and shiny when you're going to meet somebody. First impressions are everything. On today's episode of Things You Shouldn't Do With Your Polaris Ranger, pulling a 30 foot head cart. Say that's about as close as we're gonna get. It's just so much easier to back this thing in here with that because it turns so much tighter than the pickup and you can see everything. We got her in pretty tight, so I'm gonna unhook it there. Trying to make as much shed space as possible because that's gonna come out. Set the corn head and combine in the middle there. Semi will go down there and that grain truck can park right here. Well, we've got a good chance of rain tonight. So we're putting everything in a shed. The combine and both heads are in the shed. The uh, corn head, bean head, all that. The semi, both grain trucks. Grain carts unhooked, it's in a shed. And this thing's going in a shed. All the tractors, except for the little Ford, are in here right now. Got the two little ones there and the two big ones here and here. Got the fuel line to fix on that. And this gleaner I'm about to stick a for sale sign on because it's still here. But uh, it's not my combine. So I'm going to park it back in the back of the yard, out of sight, out of mind. I mean, it's basically a shed anyhow, so it doesn't need to be under one. Let's see if I can't remember how to operate this rig. I think that's got to be in neutral. Um, throttle. There we go. She's running. Three. Okay, that's definitely not third. Come on. There we go. Now she'll get some speed. Get this thing put up. Well, this is a new farm for me this year. Just rented this. Uh, there's a hundred and some odd acres here. Some of it's here, some of it's across the road, and some of it's over the hill. It's kind of split up, but um, seems to be okay ground. Um, haven't gotten the soil samples back on it yet, but I wanted to come in and run is actually uh, not just corn stalks but it's uh, popcorn is what this was so coming in and kind of chopping up the uh, residue from that and uh, leveling up the ground it's been no-tilled year after year after year so I'm just going in nice and shallow and uh, leveling off the ground filling in a few ruts and things like that so not real aggressive tillage at all that's not what i want i'm trying to leave as much residue on top as i can uh just to try and prevent any erosion out here but uh it does need leveled up in several places so i am going to run this tool across um, pretty much the entire farm so this is a uh, reclaimed coal ground all this ground has been coal mined out here um you can kind of see the way it's hilly and it lays out here um, they'll dig pits extremely deep into the ground pull the coal out and then shove the dirt back in um, 
it's kind of neat how they do it but the ground isn't near as productive as it once was but you can still grow a crop on it um, just maybe not as good of a crop so that's what I'm doing and I uh, hope you guys enjoy so we're up on top of the field right now and off that it basically just drops off as a cliff yet there's water standing on top of the hill now the reason for that is this is all terraced ground and uh, it tends to hold water in front of some of the terraces which is in a sense kind of a good thing because if it doesn't hold water you end up with really really deep gullies and washouts so they are there for a reason but you can see the rest of this field a little bit wet kind of in front of these terraces but the rest of the field is all sloped and it's dry as a bone um, but i am trying to level up there's some ruts and stuff in those and this tool is pretty good about leveling them up but the rest of this field is fairly flat um, i mean it's got a grade to it for sure but pretty good size field but like i said this has all been coal mined um, you got your old pits back down in here where they would dig the holes and uh, pile dirt up here and they move a lot of dirt back and i'm not entirely sure how this all laid before it was mined but um, i'm sure somebody wiser than me can tell you but i do think that this will make fairly decent farm ground um like i said it was grown in popcorn last year like soybeans the year before that so it'll definitely grow a crop just maybe not near as well as some farm ground will well yesterday we were out here vertical tilling and uh the tractor kept pulling down and dying couldn't figure out why seemed like a pretty major issue however as it turns out tractors typically run better when they have fuel in them uh, I said that it still had a quarter tank, but I got on a hillside and apparently it did not. So putting some fuel in it should run fine now, but definitely have air in the lines. So get to bleed that. Now I normally don't like to get things very low fuel tank wise because you suck all the dirt and crap in the bottom of the tank. So just because I ran it completely empty, we're going to throw a little sea foam in this stuff does all the things there and then some um, but it's really good at getting dirt and crud out of the tanks and just cleaning the fuel system i had really good luck with it so you put about an ounce a gallon in so we're gonna dump two 16 ounce um bottles cans whatever you want to call them in here and uh yeah we'll call that good well, I'm not sure what's going on with that thing. I thought it had air in the lines and I bled it and I bled it and I bled it. And it runs right for about 30, 40 seconds under a load and then it pulls down and dies. And every time that it does it, it's not got fuel in the filters. So I'd pump it back up, pump it back up, pump it back up see this is all worked here that's yet to be worked but uh i'd pump it up pump it up pump it up and it would die run a while and die so i started it and just let it idle thinking maybe it'll bleed itself it ran about five minutes then it died again so i'm almost thinking it's a lift pump because you've got your pump that's pumping fuel to your um fuel pump there where your injectors and everything come off and I'm almost thinking it's that pump um, which those are fairly cheap but I don't know I'm gonna have to pressure test it and see what we got going on with it but it's four o'clock I've messed with that thing for two hours and I'm frustrated so I'm going home and finding something else to do because I'm kind of at a loss and I'm gonna call some people that are smarter than I am see what they think my problem might be and see where I need to start checking into or if it's just something stupid simple that I'm missing. Well, what do you do when your tractor and vertical till go down on you? You get the ripper out and start ripping. Pretty flat out here, so 
don't think I'm hurting a thing except the compaction and uh, well, I'm, I'm hurting the compaction by taking it out. That's what I meant by that, but you get the point. We're getting rid of some compaction so we can grow, you know, 500 bushel corn out here next year, in theory, because, well, that's what the seed guy said it's got potential to do. So I'm sure that's what it'll grow because seed dealers, they never tell white lies to get you to buy seed. Especially when it's only like, you know, $50 more a bag for this special hybrid. I don't know, we'll see. Well, it's 12.30. I think I'll go home now. Did a lot of running today. Kind of tired. Kind of want to shower. And kind of haven't ate dinner yet. So, gonna do that as well. Well, we're done with this field and I believe that we have found the compaction. She's pulled down the under well it's going back up now these end rows are a little packed tight we're uh, bringing up some big old chunks and it's bringing the tractor to a complete stop so kind of cheating the ripper up downshifting and playing with all kinds of things to keep us moving but she's not liking it too much definitely some hard dirt through here got our new lift pump and gaskets Unfortunately, this was metric, and I only had my standard wrenches, so we had to get out the metric wrenches. That's a 15 and a half millimeter, isn't it? Something like that. Something like that. A little, little operation going on here. A little lift pump operation. We actually found some real metric wrenches. This is a 10 and a half millimeter. So what happened is I got this thing way too low on fuel and uh, it plugged the screen to the lift pump. I'm not sure that the lift pump's even bad, but we're gonna replace it because we've got it. We're gonna change the fuel filters while we're here and put a bunch of fuel treatment in it because I've got crap in the bottom of the tank that I don't want there. In the meantime, he's trying to get the canooter valve Shut up. Off of the uh, Watchman Dickey, and he's trying to use that metric wrench. Oh my god! And he's bending the uh, corner of my pickup. Rape tape again. Um, she's pulling this thing like it ain't even back there, which is funny because it wasn't pulling it worth of crap before. But that's because half the fuel system was so dang plugged up that it wasn't getting any fuel. So it's no wonder. Um, but we got it running good now. So I'm gonna let Tweedledee down there take this tractor over and I'm gonna run back to the farm and uh, get the ripper out and go rip my bottom ground. It's supposed to start raining tomorrow night. So hopefully he can get the vertical tilling done and I can get the uh, ripping done tomorrow and uh, we'll be back in business tomorrow and completely done with tillage. So that'll be nice. Now that is a beautiful looking cornfield. Vertical till, chopped every stalk. Field's completely level. There's not a single corn stalk standing. They're nice and chopped up. Plant right into that in the spring. Just put beans right into it. The neighbor's going over here. He's got, I think it's a 9370, so it'd be two or three sizes bigger than the 9330. He's pulling a case 33 or 330 or 335 turbo till. Um, but yeah, I'd love to have a little bit bigger tractor than what the 9330 is, but it works for what I'm doing. But there's a few times I did wish that it had a little bit more power than what it does. But we're headed to go rip some bottom ground and it may still be a little bit wet, but we're gonna find out. Well, it's not wet out here, but I can definitely tell you that there's a heck of a lot of compaction. This farm's never been ripped, as far as I can remember. And the guy that farmed it uh, a long time ago that used to own it, um, he didn't have a tractor big enough to pull a ripper, and he owned this for 50-some, probably 60-plus years. 
So this ground's never been ripped and it's a creek bottom. And holy crap, is it hard. I'm sitting here picking the ripper up and down and up and down just so I can get across the field. I mean, I'm running it as deep as I possibly can, but holy cow. I'm pulling up some stuff out here that looks like freaking boulders and rocks and it's just hard pan. So that explains why this farm is really, really poorly drained. It has a lot of spots where water just sets on top of the ground and I think that's because it can't get any lower. So this is definitely helping, or at least in my head it is. I could be completely wrong, but as long as we don't have a super muddy spring, this will be pretty good to uh, work under and level up and plant corn into next spring. But if it's a muddy spring, I'm screwed because I'll sink the trackers as deep as I'm ripping. So that won't be fun. So hopefully we have a dry spring, hopefully. All right, we jumped out for a quick bathroom break, but I'll show you what we're doing. See that big chunk right there? That's what that ripper's doing. And the reason it's on top of the ground is that's where I picked the ripper up. But underneath the ground, that's the size of the stuff that we're shattering. And you can see little chunks of it, kind of like this guy. Now, mind you that this ground's still a little bit wet, but that hardly busted. I mean, this stuff is packed hard and really what we're doing is just lifting it up and shattering it so water can go down roots can go down and the roots can get to the nutrients that are out here this is really really fertile dirt it's just really really poorly drained now just look at the size of these i mean i wear a size 12 boot and look at that that's what we're doing so it's definitely making the tractor talk um, but you can kind of see where the grass grew through here I'm gonna take a grader blade and come down here with the backhoe and clean that out down there see there's a creek I'll run over here real quick kind of show you but there is a creek a very big one right here so I farm all that over there. I farm all the way up to where those lights are. This is 120, I think 120 acre farm. And, uh, but most of it is creek bottoms like this. And like I said, it's, it's really good dirt. It's just really poorly drained dirt. And most of the time, I don't even know that tile would help because there's so many spots out here well, I mean, the water gets over all of this. It floods all the time. Two, three times a year at least, this has water over it. So that water weighs a lot. And when all that water is sitting on top of this ground, it packs it down. And that's what we're trying to get rid of is some of that compaction. Um, but I've got like these little waterways here. I'm going to take the backhoe and clean it out down there. And then take my PTO ditcher and a grader blade and kind of clean these out these are all kind of sloped and the guy that farmed this years and years ago was excellent at what he did because this was before gps this was before lasers and levels and stuff like that he did this all eyeing it and he did a very very good job but this ground is sloped gradually down sloped gradually down and then he'd cut a ditch and about every 120 160 foot there's another one of these. Well, as long as you keep them cleaned out, it's drained pretty good because it runs to the creek. That's what we want. Now, it's rare that I will say I want ditches in the field. Normally, they're washout ditches and we don't want them. But in this case, it's flat as a pancake and we want water to run out of the field. Otherwise, it pools up out here, it drowns out the crop and you just don't grow much of anything. So that's what I'm doing. Rippin's trying to help the water go down some out in the middle of the field um normally i rip everything at an angle but because of these ditches i'm not ripping at an angle right now so that's what we're doing so fun fact anywhere that there is grass like that right there where the beans drown out ripper pulls extremely hard but then you get out here where the beans were really good and there weren't any weeds the ripper pulls fine 
those low spots just hold water and they hold water because they have compaction they have compaction because they hold water now this is not a quick fix to okay this field will never hold water again it needs a greater blade and a whole lot of dirt work down here as well as a pto ditcher which i'm working on but this thing should help tremendously um, just with this ground but you got spots like that that just they drown out they hold water and they drown out so it's interesting that this thing will pull fine all the way across the field and then you get a spot like this and it pulls the guts out of the tractor it is uh it's a little bit rough doing the end rows considering I'm going completely sideways, but it does look like my dinner is here. My wife just got off work, so I'm just now getting supper at 10.30, but I still appreciate it. Supper at 10.30 is better than no supper at all, so I'll take it. We're ripping the end rows. And it appears that she's following me out here, which I really wish she wouldn't. I have no idea what she is doing. I asked her why she drove through the end of the field and she said, I'm not really sure at this point, it's awful rough. And I said, well, I wish you hadn't because now I gotta rip that to take your tire tracks out. And she said, well, now it's gonna be extra ripped. It'll have an eight pack. And it took me a minute to figure out what she meant by that. It's gonna be extra ripped. It'll have an eight pack. She drives my truck about like I do, like we absolutely stole it. All right, it's official. I'm officially bored. Well, it's supposed to be raining in the morning, but it's 2 a.m., so I feel like I've done my part. Um, I'm gonna go home and get some fuel. That's the main reason I'm quitting right now is I'm out of fuel, more or less. So, I'm gonna go home, get some fuel, get a couple hours of sleep, and hopefully head back here and beat the rain in the morning. I'm down to like 50 acres left that I wanna get ripped, so not much at all but hopefully we can beat the rain. Well, it's 28 degrees and raining, but I'm being an Uber for my wife, who's decided she wants to deer hunt this morning, so I'm dropping her off. Well, I spent most of the morning ripping. It's about three in the afternoon now, and uh, Got majority of that 120 acre farm that I wanted to get done ripping done. Um, got a six acre field and an eight acre field left to rip and that's it. But fortunately that shank is, you know, not like the rest of them, which isn't a big deal. You got your little hole here and your hole here and just broke a shear bolt. So not a big deal. Um, just got to beat that back down and put a new bolt in it. Now, Buddy was running the vertical till last night, and he broke the uh, basket. The bracket right there is broke. So I ratchet strapped everything up. You can see the ratchet strap there just so it wasn't dragging on the road. Got it home, so that way I don't have to weld on it in the field i can actually do it here in the shop so we're going to stick a new shear bolt in the ripper and uh get it kind of out of the way it's raining and i'm hungry and i told my wife we'd go out to eat tonight so we're going to go out to eat tonight i don't even know what day i think it's saturday today i don't even know what day it is i just know that i've been in a tractor every day this week from dusk till dawn and then some so um, gonna get that fixed. The oil needs changed in the Steiger. It's actually a couple hours over a hundred hours to change them every hundred hours. 
Um, so I'm going to get that changed as well. Um, but that will probably wait till Monday. It's raining right now. It's supposed to rain tonight. So I'm going to actually take a Sunday off for once. But both of these tractors are absolutely filthy. But they've also combined ran over about 800 acres of uh, tillage. So that thing went over 400 acres. Uh, well, actually more than 400 acres. It's been... Shoot, that thing's gone over 600 acres of corn stalks at this point, and this thing's ripped about, probably, you know, over 200 acres. So it's combined, they've done more than 800 acres. Um, so can't complain. Um, they've been holding up pretty good for the use and abuse they've been going through. Um, they're both really good tractors, and they're both pretty good tools. I mean, this thing was dirt cheap, so I'm not complaining about a broken shear bolt. That's literally... an 30 second fix but that thing that's the second time that welds broke there so i'm gonna dig through the metal pile here and kind of reinforce that when it gets welded back this time make sure it doesn't happen again um the weld that was on there last time i actually didn't weld it a buddy of mine did he's a heck of a lot better welder than i am but stuff that thing's just got a lot of pressure on it and once they break they're just weak so it needs braced up put a couple patches on it and make sure it don't happen again anyhow i'm gonna go get something to eat. i don't know if you guys can see what that flag's doing or not but it's getting a little wild out here hey everybody and happy thanksgiving and thank you for watching these videos um, if you haven't already, like the video, comment, or subscribe. We do have merchandise out for a limited time right now. Um, it's going to be out for a little while longer. We do have some new stuff coming. I'll let her talk about that because she knows a whole lot more about it than I do. So I'll let her learn you about that. So our store was originally supposed to close at midnight on Black Friday. Um, we have fleece head wraps, beanies, ball caps, long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts, crew necks, hoodies, and we will be extending the shop because we are going to add CC beanies with leather patches and um, trucker caps with leather patches as well. We'll have three different CC beanies, we'll have a ponytail beanie, and then um, a classic beanie and I think the store said it was like a hipster beanie um, available in different colors and then the gray and black trucker cap with a brown leather patch on it so yeah she learned you more than I know about it honestly that was news to me what we've got new so thank you guys for watching thank you guys for uh, getting as much merchandise as you have been we extended the deadline just because we've had so many orders which honestly I didn't expect whatsoever. And we will be doing a giveaway. Um, we'll put everyone that's placed an order on a randomized wheel chart and the winner will win a ball cap and an Amazon gift card. So I hope you guys have a Thanksgiving, good Thanksgiving. I'm speaking, you know, slurring my words, twisting my words, whatever, but hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving and uh, thanks for watching. Do this or yeah. okay. Okay. no start and then clear. There's people walking behind us right now. <laughs> See them? <laughs> okay. Hey everybody and happy Thanksgiving. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to comment. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem. <laughs> okay, I'll get it together. Okay. So you're supposed to start a new clip so I can...